The bangle bracelet weaver tool by Kleshna comes with 22 pegs and 44 stoppers. You can use beetle-on bead stringing wire, you can use artistic wire, you can use monofilament like Supplemax, you can add beads, rhinestones, and all kinds of trimmings to it, either as you're doing your weaving or after you're doing your weaving to embellish. To set the tool up, what you'll do is choose which side bangle bracelet you'd like to make. So the inside ring of dots or holes will be the smallest bracelet, then a medium sized bracelet and a larger size bracelet. To attach the pegs, what you'll do is insert one of the stoppers over the peg, leaving a couple of centimeters, and insert that peg through the hole on the bottom and secure it in place with another stopper. Continue setting your tool up by inserting the peg into a stopper, inserting the peg into the hole, and securing it in place with another stopper. Make sure that you follow the same line of holes all the way around the tool. Now that I have my tool set up, I'm going to set up my beetle and bead stringing wire to get started. So today I'm using 49 strand 024 silver color and gold color wire. And I'll use these spool tamers in place of the clip. And what that does, it makes it very easy to spool the wire off and yet still keep it contained. To do this, put the spool tamer over the wire and thread the end of the wire through the hole. I find that it is very helpful to label my spools with the number one and number two as I'm doing my weave. That way I can keep track of them. Now, the first step to weaving on the Bengal Bracelet Weaver tool by Kleshna is to take a number two crimp tube and crimp those two wires together at the end. Now the idea is you will be weaving with these wires, switching spool number one and spool num number two as you go. So to get started, what you'll do is take spool number two, up behind that next rod and in front of the one in front of it. And what you'll do when you put that spool back on the table is put it above spool number one. Now it's time to use spool number one. So what you'll do is again, you'll bring that wire in front of this rod behind the next rod, in front of the following rod, and back above spool number two. And you can see that those wires are now crossed. You'll continue bringing the wire up, around, behind, and in front of the next peg as you work clockwise around the tool. So again, I'm taking wire number one, around this peg, behind the following peg, in front of the next peg, and placing that spool on the table above the resting spool. It helps to use your, it helps to use your thumb as a guide to keep those wires in place. And as you begin your second round, you'll start to see the wires are lining up with each other gold with gold and silver with silver. Now here I've reached a short part of my wire again, so I'm going to go ahead, hold on to the wire, and pull out some more slack on both of the spools. I'm going to continue weaving my wire around and I'll see you again when we're ready to finish. So now I have reached the bracelet width that I'd like it to be and I'm coming back around to the beginning and I can tell that because that's where my crimped bead is that I originally crimped and I can just double check and make sure all of my silvers are lined up and all of my golds are lined up all the way around the bracelet and you can start to see how that silver and gold effect really creates a sh really interesting shimmer on the bracelet. I'm going to do two more crosses so that I reach around to where I started with this crimp and I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little more slack and cut those two wires from their spools. 
at this point I just want to double check that everything looks good and everything looks like it is in order. And I'm going to go ahead and take another number two crimp tube and thread it right on the end of those two wires. And here you can either flatten this crimp by squeezing it flat or you can use your crimp tool. So to get these wires out of the way, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut them short. And it is very important now not to take the bracelet off the tool. We haven't gone back through and secured those crossed wires. The only thing that is keeping them in place is these rods. So very carefully what you'll do is move the bracelet you'll have to wiggle it around to the middle of those pegs. And again, being very careful not to take the wire off of the rods, you're going to very gently pull the rods from the base of the tool. And you want to make sure that all of your stoppers go back in the bag. Now you can put your tool aside because you'll be working with the bracelet on the rods for the next step. So now that I have the rods free, I'm just going to move the bracelet into the middle of those rods. And now you're going to want to take a five foot piece of wire off of your spool. So with my five foot piece of wire, I'm going to start a couple of rods up from where my two crimp tubes are already crimped and thread that wire in between the crossed wire against one of the rods. I'm gonna bring that wire all the way through so that it is halfway on that bracelet. And now I'm going to crisscross the wire through where each rod intersects the wire. So I will thread in from this side here. And back through this side here. And don't worry about pulling this super tight because after we have all of the crisscrosses made, then we'll go ahead and tighten everything at the end. So here's my first cross. I'm gonna go ahead and cross again, right above the next rod, and continue doing that all the way around. So now I've woven my wire all the way through my bracelet, and I've made sure that I have captured both of the crimped ends in the wire as I've woven it. And then back around to the beginning. So what I'm going to do for my last step here is take the one wire back through and onto that wire I am going to string a crimp tube. Then I'm going to take the last end of the last wire back through that crimp tube and lastly, right back through that space where the first wire started. And it might take a little finessing to get all of these wires into that space, but with a little perseverance, that's not too hard.
Now I'm not going to crimp this crimp tube down at this time. It's go just going to hold all of these wires in place. Because now, since I have all of the wires basically replacing the rods, I can go ahead and pull the rods out of my bracelet. And you can see the wires are crossed, but they are sticking out at some um, uneven spaces. So what I like to do is start again back at the beginning and use either my fingers or two bent chain nose pliers and just tighten all of those loops around. And this is where you can really see your bracelet start to take shape. You may have to do this more than once to make sure that all of the wires are as tight or as loose as you'd like them to be. Now I have all of my wire tightened up the way that I'd like it to be, and now I'm going to go ahead and hide this crimp tube in this row of wires and flatten it. So to do that, I'm just going to snug it down in here with my bent chain nose pliers. It doesn't have to be too far. I can move these wires out of the way. I just don't want this crimp to be a prominent part of the design. And once I have it kind of hidden in between some of these wires, I'm going to move the wires aside and just flatten that crimp down because I don't want to actually flatten any of the wire. And then there we go, just hide it in there and go ahead with my nippers and cut the ends on that side and then pull this one out just a little bit. So this end's going to get hidden in there as well. And the last step is I just want to tuck these two ends in as well so they're not sticking out to poke anyone. And I could probably trim them just a little bit more also. Better to trim a couple of times than to not have enough slack. And I'm just going to tuck this one in here. There we go. And do the same thing over here. I'm just going to trim that down a little bit more and go ahead and tuck that. Let's see, I think I'm going to tuck that in this space right here. And there you have it, a beautiful woven bracelet using the Bengal Bracelet Weaver Tool by Kleshna.